Cool, okay. Um, again, like Tom, this is gonna be a relatively uh, straightforward short update. Um, from, certainly from my UK side. Uh, so those of you who have been uh, attendees of the UK IPv6 Council for a while now will know that the UK has been dual-stacked uh, dual for uh, since 2016, we've been default on. Um, not too many sort of updates to provide there. Uh, in 2019, we, we launched the voice over IPv6 service. Um, so between the ATA and the Skyhub and the SBC, that was native v6. Um, no sort of other major updates or changes there. I guess one thing I'll call out is the ratio between um, the our legacy product, the uh, ADSL2 unbundled services, which use PPPoE um, and DHPv6 on top of that. Those are kind of shifting away now, obviously, as you'd expect more uptake in, in the fiber to the home, fiber to the cabinet products. Uh, these are going to native dual stack DHPv4 and DHPv6, or IPOE as we call it. Um, the, the more interesting stuff that we've been doing lately, uh, and again, the more recent viewers and participants of the group will know that we've launched a broadband, um, a, a greenfield fixed line broadband network in, in Italy. Um, this had a, uh, it was a greenfield deployment, so we had no IPv4 space to start with, so we had to uh, to buy some, um, and as you all know, the price uh, the price cost that these days quite high. So we went for a um, we wanted an IPv4 address sharing um, technology, uh, and we used MapT uh, for that, which is an IPv4 as a service method. Um, we did initially launch that as dual stack, um, but we have uh, we have the goal of moving all of that across to to, uh, to MapT or IPv uh, with IPv6 only um, by the end of this year. Uh, and as you will note, the end this year is quickly closing. So where are we at with that? Um, the uh, we've broken them, broken our access methodologies down to uh, to two different types access types. Uh, you'll see that um, the, the light blue and the dark blue, those are the planned lines for our migration, um, and the yellow and red are where we are now. So um, you can see that we are ahead of where we plan to be for both of our access technologies in Italy, um, which means we are over 90, uh, 95%, um, more than that actually, 99% um, of our customer base has been moved across to MAPT. If you have a look at the left-hand side of the graph, you'll see the red line. We kind of started our migration. We had to pause um, and we had a couple of little teething problems there. We rolled back a little bit um, and then paused for a, for a bit longer until we sorted those, uh, those sort of uh, issues out. Uh, we then reassessed our plan, um, reforecasted and, uh, and carried on. We managed to, um, to get a little bit further and then uh, we had another problem, nothing to do with MAPT this time. This was more sort of ancillary services where we had to pause it and uh, and plateau for a little bit whilst those issues were again sorted. Uh, but we managed to then ramp back up and ramp up quite quickly and sort of you know get to our targets and beat those, which is good. So yeah, as I mentioned, that sort of um, to quantify those those lines on the graph that it turns that. Basically means we are uh, we are yeah MapT is default on now for all of our new customers in Italy, and the ninety nine percent or larger than ninety nine percent of our existing customers have been migrated over. The majority of those uh, so over ninety five percent of those are using um, they're in a what we call a sixteen to one um, sharing ratio of IPv four address. IPv four addresses uh, and then the sort of less than four percent we are. We have kept out, um, and we have in what we call a uh, an opt-out profile, which means they get a an entire IPv4 address to use for themselves. So there's still the IPv4 connectivity is still being delivered over the top of well, using MapT, um, but they get the entire address to use. There's a very small percentage, less than one, um, of customers remaining in the dual stack service. Um, these were, we specifically excluded uh, the third party CPUs on the network, um, as we, uh, we, cannot be, we can't be sure whether those third party devices can support MAPT. Um, most of 
most third party CPEs out there can't. So we, uh, we explicitly excluded them from migrations initially. Uh, and then we, we, we were proactive with our communications and we told them that they were going to be migrated across um, all of the terms and conditions that, uh, that they signed up to when, when picking up the service mentioned they, they needed to use MAPT. Um, we gave them the information up front. Um, but yeah, so we're giving a little bit more time now to, to, to make alternative arrangements or plug their Sky Hub back in uh, before we flip the switch. We're hoping to, to finish those migrations off before Christmas, um, but we will probably do a little bit more mop up in, in January, I imagine. So that's, uh, that's the Italian sort of uh, update. Uh, and now, uh, conversely to Tom's update, where it's up and to the right, um, you, those eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed that uh, the UK graph has kind of gone uh, sort of down to the right a little bit. Um, there, we have sort of, we have identified a few new bugs sort of crept in um, to, to various areas. Um, and uh, I guess probably the one major one that is, is kind of causing the DHPv6 client to get a little bit uh, or irrecoverably stuck um, and uh, without a reboot. So once we kind of squash some of those uh, new bugs that have crept in, we'll probably uh, hopefully see that graph go back and up and to the right again uh, in the near future once we can push those, uh, those fixes out. So yeah, that's, uh, I think that's probably the end of it. Yeah, that's the end of my, my update. Happy to take some questions. Excellent. I would just say, Richard, I'm really pleased to see that you guys are deploying MAPT because if you remember, we talked about it probably in 2012, but it was still being discussed as one of the drafts in ITF. I don't think it was an RFC at the time, but I think we talked about it such a long time ago. So it's really great to see it. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Um, and, and again, I think I think well, I think we're definitely going to be the biggest deployment, um, real world deployment in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure uh, so pretty sure it's bigger than, than some of them in, in, in North America as well. Yeah. Um, not sure about China. I think there's some big ones in China, but um, well, well, we don't have that information, right? So that's hard to judge. Yeah. Um, yeah, if people want to ask questions, feel free to use the bottom right reactions tab in Zoom to raise a hand particularly if you're happy to ask it in, in person. But there's a couple that, have, couple that have appeared in the chat. Um, Loba has asked why the one-to-one -one sharing ratio for some. Okay, yep, yep. So um, that is, uh, so I think there's some other presentations. I did one for um, for one of the RIPE NCC open homes. And and again, I gave an update uh, at, a, at, a, at the Etsy um, IP talk this morning where I speak about this. Um, the the opt-out profile. So when we were doing the analysis back uh, before, well, when we were doing the original architecture and design, um, obviously customer experience is, is you know, a primary concern. Um, and we, this, there was concern around MAPT as a technology itself, but we kind of, we, we realized that probably the biggest risk to customer experience was going to be the IPv4 address sharing rather than the MAPT translation. Um, so, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, presumably anyone who's even doing normal CGN NAT444 uh, well, ideally should have a kind of an opt-out profile where a customer can even, if, if, if you don't want to um, give it away for free, charge them an extra five or a month like, um, like some other UK providers do and give them that whole IPv4 address so that they can do poor forwarding, you know, DMZ, um, other sorts of stuff. Um, also, non-port-based uh, layer four protocols such as GRE, etc. Um, yeah. And there's a question also from uh, Tim Winters. Do you want to ask in person, Tim, or shall I read it out? You can. Oh, I mean, I'll read it right here. And why did you guys choose Map T over? Other, there's lots of there's lots of v4 as a service options. What what led you guys to choose map t out of curiosity? Yeah, it wasn't a um it, it wasn't sort of you know we didn't just throw a dart at a dartboard and and, uh, and and pick one. Um, we did we did evaluate them um quite seriously. Uh, there's uh the the statelessness of map t and the the I guess okay. the the holy grail promise of of um 
of uh, uh, of cheaper hardware and more scalable hardware is probably the biggest um, benefit for us. I think the 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 options came down to um, basically we. We, we narrowed all of the IPv4 as a service ones down to MAPT. Um, and then the options were basically either you do that, you go all the way to, to you know, the holy grail stateless and everything's wonderful, um, theoretically, or the or you just you just suck it up and you go dual stack with CGN um, for reliability, well, I guess, um, confidence in a solution. Um, so I think those were two real options. Within the IPv4 as a service space, um, there's a there's a draft that the V6 Ops working group are working on now, um, uh, comparing all of those the transition technologies and the, yeah those V4 as a service technologies. Would recommend people read that and um, and yeah. Just a quick follow up question: How concerned are you about third party CPE supporting it? I mean, we've started to see more around that, but not nearly enough to try to grab anything off the shelf. Yeah, um, it, it wasn't a major concern for us because we have uh, we developed the CPE in house. Um, in house, okay. yeah, exactly. So um, I, I think initially it was a it was a proof of concept saying can we do it. So we we took the Broadcom SDK, we took the hardware, um, the the SOC that we used, and and we we built a proof of concept. Once we were confident that it it we could make it functionally work, then it just came down to you know, developing all of the glue and the prettiness that sits on top of it. Um, yeah. Uh, there, I will call out in Italy, there is um, there is a regulation there, uh, a, a regulation called um, Modem Libero, where you have to provide, um, or you have to, an ISP cannot be seen to actively prevent the use of third party devices. Um, so we do have to uh, we do have to support third party devices, um, or we can't block them. So we did we did try and um, communicate the use of MAPT and how we were doing it, and uh, um, and I, I, yeah, there was some certainly some concerns there that we were we were being a little bit anti competitive. I guess uh, we didn't want to be seen as that, and um, we didn't want the regulators to to, um, to tell us off. So. I think it's open standards. There's already there's open WRT which works. So if you can give them a reference example to say here's a here's at least one third party software at least that works, then yeah, that mitigated our concerns. Mm 